Should developers be excited about the Apple M1 silicon chip and the new MacBook Pro that comes along with it? I'm pretty excited about this because I can see that the M1 chip fundamentally changes the way that we might be running apps in the future. We might never need an emulator at all, which is really cool. Let's jump in and take a look. It's November 10th and Apple have released something brand new. It's not really a CPU. It's more like a combination of everything you'd normally expect to see on a motherboard. This is the M1 chip, which has RAM, it has CPUs, it has graphics cards, and it has a lot more too. All of these things are then integrated into a single chip, which will have low latency and high performance. It'll be able to utilize less battery life and give you more bang for your buck, which is pretty cool so far. I do a lot of mobile applications as well as websites, so I wonder what this means to me as a developer. The first thing I notice is that the graphics performance has almost doubled and it's using almost half as much power as it used to. This is absolutely insane. For 10 watts, you do get two times the performance that you get on the latest PC laptop chip. And this means that if you're running something, you're running it at a third of the power, which is incredible. It means that you can do more with less. As a React developer making websites and apps, my CPU always takes the cake, especially when Chrome tries to use up all the resources. So this sounds like a great change, especially if I get more battery life out of it. The other thing is that this M1 chip comes with 8 CPUs and 8 graphics cards. This is a hell of a lot. This means that we should be able to do a lot of performance on here. I think some of the statistics written up on the website is something like 3.5 times the CPU performance as previous gens, as well as I think uh, for the graphics card two times the performance that we were seeing last time. Now this is pretty insane I have to say. It means that we're going to get a lot out of this device and I'm really going to look forward to seeing what this looks like when it comes to running mobile applications because I'm trying to virtualize a device normally when I'm doing React Native. I have to virtualize an iOS device or maybe a React Native device in Android Studio as well. And will this even work with Android Studio? Let's take a closer look at some of these things. Here's the website and we can see that there is a version of Xcode running here. The statistics that Apple is currently providing is that we'll get 2.8 times the performance, which is pretty insane. Let's see some more information about this. So previous 13 inch MacBooks would get just this regular boring gray amount of performance and these new ones here as you can see are getting 2.8 times but this is just for xcode let's check out final cut final cut also gets 2.8 uh affinity photo gets 2 and logic pro gets 1.8 so obviously the applications from apple here get the most performance boost there's no statistics here yet on android studio maybe i'm not too sure if that's even compatible but uh, let's do a quick google to find out all right, so I have a quick answer for you guys, and it is that no, Android Studio and emulating x86 environments on Android will not work on the Apple Silicon yet, but it will be in the future, so that's good news at least. Another great thing about this device is the neural engine. This is something that's getting more popular these days. We're seeing things like machine learning and artificial intelligence and being able to have a 16 core neural engine means that we can do faster video processing, image processing, voice processing, and being able to run these through means that we can do more cool stuff in our applications when we're developing them out. And if that still wasn't enough, Apple is releasing this with their next iteration of Mac OS, which is Big Spur. Now I haven't upgraded just yet and I would always recommend you wait a little bit before upgrading, but there are a lot of benefits to Big Spur, which is the fact that it really utilizes that M1 chip very well, especially in all its applications. And there is a very interesting aspect to this, especially for developers like me who do a lot of mobile applications. This is the fact that for the first time ever, we'll be able to run our applications, which we normally run on our iPhones and on our iPads straight on the Mac. It means that most likely we don't even need an emulator and we can just run the applications like native applications on Mac OS. And this is a game changer, especially when you're doing app development every day and you have to dedicate so much RAM and CPU and compiling and all that other jazz just to run an application and do hot loading. This in itself is what I'm the most excited about 
in terms of this M1 chip. And I'll really have to see where the direction is and whether this is something that they'll integrate into React Native. Now, it's not all flowers and roses. There are some drawbacks, as you would expect, when you're moving over to the M1 chip. And it might not be for you, depending on what you're running. So check out this great video by DevOps Directive, which I'll link somewhere up here over there that you can click on. And he goes into further details about the differences between the x86 chip and what you might be missing out on when you move to the M1 chip. But otherwise, let's have a look at the different options that Apple is providing for this new M1 chip, because personally, I'm a big fan of the MacBook Pro. And if there's one out there that can replace my current MacBook Pro, I'll really be looking forward to that. It looks like I'll have to be eating my words here. Unfortunately, from what I can see, the M1 chip is being released on the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro 13 edition and the Mac, but it's not being released on the MacBook 15 slash 16 edition, which is a really strange choice. That is my personal preference because I prefer the larger screen size and the keyboard and a larger battery too. So I guess I'll have to just wait to see if this changes, but for the time being, I guess I might hold off purchasing it. 